All right, folks. So it's six o'clock. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today is Tuesday, November third, twenty twenty. This is a regular city council meeting due to COVID nineteen pandemic emergency. We have to continue to handle our city council meeting much different than we usually do due to the safety of our staff and due to the safety of the public. Now I'm going to ask our city manager give a brief explanation to the public regarding the city council meeting. Mr. Hines. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Lorenzo Hines, city manager. Uh, good evening. Uh, the meeting of the Gulf City Council was being conducted by teleconference slash video conference in compliance with the state and county stay-at-home orders and as allowed by the governor's executive order in 29-20, which allows for a deviation of teleconference rules required by the Brown Act. Members of the public will see the council members and city staff who are appearing via remote video slash telephone connections. City council meetings will be held virtually by teleconference or video conference until further notice. Today's agenda states that rather than attending in person, residents may submit written public comments via email to pubcom at cityofgold.org prior to the council meeting. Any written comments that were received will be read out loud during the city council meeting by the city clerk on the appropriate agenda item subject to the customary five minute time limit unless the same individual also appears and requests to speak live during the meeting. Uh, we will take live comments first and then the written comments will be read out loud. We're also using the Zoom webinar format which allows the public to provide live public comment. Members of the public may use the link to enter the webinar as attendees they should be able to use the raise your hand, raise their hand feature option in the Zoom webinar to let us know if they would like to speak and should do so when the mayor announces the time for general public comment or when the specific item is called if your comment concerns an item on the agenda. We request, as we typically do in person council meetings, that speakers provide their name and address when they are called on to speak and their line will be unmuted, unmuted at that time. Attendees should also see the lower hand feature if they change their minds and do not want to speak. And Mr. Mayor, that concludes my comments on that issue. Thank you. Call the meeting in order. Uh, Tina may have a roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lozano. Here. Council Member Farmer. Here. Council Member Campion. Here. Council Member Lampson. Here. Mayor Sandu. Here. Please raise the silent uh, prayer and flag snow. Flag snow. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Tina, please read the replayment statement. This meeting of the Galt City Council will be cable cast on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will air Friday, November 6th at 9 a.m. and Saturday, November 7th at 9 a.m. A DVD copy is available for checkout from any library branch. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item, council, any agenda approval, addition or deletion. If it's not, the next agenda item is C, uh, presentation. There is no presentation. Next agenda item D, public comments. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, members of the public may address 
the city council on non-agenda items. The, the public comment section is for the city council to receive comments, except for brief responses to questions, no discussion or action may be taken on any item that is not listed on the agenda. Please limit comments to a maximum of five minutes. Due to statewide emergency and social distancing guidelines, public comments may be submitted via email to pubcom at cityofgalt.org and will be read out loud subject to the customary five minute time limitation. Also members of the public may participate electronically via HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash US 02 web.zoom.us forward slash J forward slash 8154-8839-858 webinar ID 815-4883-9858. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item E, reports by city council members and regional boards, commission and committees. Vice Mayor Lizano, anything want to report? I have nothing to report. We have, um, I do have a couple of SACOG committee meetings coming up next. Uh, okay. All right, so council member Campion. <clears throat> nothing to report tonight, thank you. Council Member Lampson. Uh, yes, we had our last air quality board meeting for the year. We're not having one in December. Um, we talked about long range air quality planning and we need to support programs to achieve attainment of air quality health standards, including what the state has implemented, um, which we call SIP state implementation plans and approved SIP is required for state COG federal transportation funding and days impacted by wildfire can be excluded from regulatory use with approval from the EPA. Um, 2020 was a historic wildfire season for air quality, as you know. Um, comparing it to the camp, the campfire to the, um, up in, in 2018, those still had some smokier days than we had, even though we had a longer sustained smoky smoky days. Um, if you guys remember the camp for in 2018, we were all wearing masks then. And the kids were wearing masks to school until they decided school was unsafe because of the smoke in the air. So, but the lightning fires gave us a lot more. So um, we're now we're trying to assess the air pollution impacts from the wildfires and forecast conditions and moving forward with our next steps. So that's it. Then we also had our youth commission meeting and we're just trying to keep planning things and hoping that we'll be able to do things with the city like having movie night. We were um, able to have a booth at the, uh, the drive-through candy Halloween thing um, and they really enjoyed that. Had about seven out of the 10 participate in that. And um, our city manager Lorenzo came forward with some very interesting questions as, as he, quite interesting questions because they they go with our statement of reason and why we're why we are a youth commission and they're getting us on track what how do the youth feel about growth how do they feel about things to do in the community and, and what are they looking forward to in 10 20 years in the community and those kind of things where the youth can advise the council and i really want to thank um lorenzo Hines for city manager Hines for doing that because now we're having some open discussions and we're going to get back to you on that. And I would also like to welcome acting chief Brian Kalinowski to this meeting. We hope we can drag it out to 11 o'clock for you. That's all. Thank you. Uh, You're muted. Down. Well, I don't want to extend the meeting any longer than necessary, but thank you very much. Council member Farmer. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't know if I reported on this last meeting, but I did have a uh, library authority meeting um, a couple weeks ago and uh, we had a closed session regarding the personnel matter. And then we just briefly discussed about um, in the process of reopening branches and things. Uh, so nothing that I can really report out on. I also like to welcome um, Chief Kalinowski going to be interesting keep i'm always tend to say lieutenant but i have to get used to that but welcome 
And I also too did attend the, uh, the drive through Halloween event it was very well attended. I think we were all very well surprised at the attendance went very well. I was glad to see the community turn out and uh, it was a good night. So that's all I have. Thank you, Sean. I'll just interject. If there was a winner, I think council member farmers booth would have been the winner. Just saying. Congratulations, uh, council member farmer. Uh, I have nothing to report tonight on the original. Uh, the next end item I'm going to move is information consent calendar. Uh, I would like to entertain. Mr. Mayor, people. sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to note for the um, minutes that under public comment, we did not have any written public comments. Okay, we do, we do have any comment from Rose, anybody? No, we have no public comments on the attendee side. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, ask if we adopt the consent calendar as presented. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Farmer, second by Council Member Campion. Tina, may I have a roll call vote, please? Vice Mayor Lozano. Mr. Council Member Lozano. He's having an audio problem, it looks yeah, like. I, I think that was a yes. Yeah. <laughs> Council Member Farmer. Aye. Council Member Campion. Aye. Council Member Lampson. Aye. Mayor Sandu. Aye. Motion passes with five to zero. Uh, next in the item G, schedule matter notice of public hearing. Uh, there is no schedule matter no notice of pub public hearing today. Next in the item H, regular calendar. That's H1, Treasurer's Office, uh, Treasurer Report for period ending September 2020. Uh, Mr. Sean uh, Farrell out there? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, you know, we all, as I said last time I was, I was here, um, you know, interest rates are going down. Um, and um, right now, 80% of all the city's funds are invested with the state of California in the LAIF account, the local agency investment fund. And the reason is because LAIF is paying uh, about 69 uh, basis points, which is 0.69 of 1%. And um, just to give you some comparison, a three month, say, treasury bill is 0.09%, a five year uh, treasury note is 0.39. So as you can see, it makes complete sense right now to keep as much as you can in, in with the state of California. Now that, that rate of course is coming down as well. Just in the month of October, that rate came down seven basis points. So it's uh, today it's at 0.62. Um, for the fiscal quarter, first quarter, the city earned $143,902 in interest. Um, if you uh, times that by four, you can see that uh, we're going to be, it's, it's a tough year. Okay. So we'll, we'll maybe hit, I'm hoping 500,000 at, at the end of the fiscal year. And um, the only uh, other news that I have is that uh, just this past Friday, I signed a new um, five-year uh, agreement for banking services, of course, with uh, F&M Bank. And uh, so that, that will be good for five years. And uh, there's a two-year option to extend after that. So, Mr. Mayor, that's uh, that's all I have tonight. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer from from anybody or you know any of the council members. Um, but I ask for your approval for the um, uh, treasurer's report, September 2020. Thank you, uh, council members. Anybody? Any comment? Any question? I just have one question, Sean. So do we get a signing bonus for the new contract with the bank or? Yeah. <laughs> you can throw um, on a free, free barbecue set or something. If, if you want a free barbecue set, I'll, I'll make sure you get it there. <laughs> I'm sure they can spring for it. 
All right, any other council member, any other comment, question? If he's not, then I would like to open a public comment. Any comment, a written comment, uh, Tina? No written comment. Rose, anybody on? No public comment on uh, the attendee side. Thank you. If it's not, then I would like to entertain a motion to accept the treasury report as submitted. So moved. Second. Or second, doesn't matter. Either way, it's fine. A motion moved by Council Member Lampson. Who is on the second? Uh, second by Council Member Farmer. Tina may have a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Lozano. Aye. Council Member Farmer. Aye. Council Member Campion. Aye. Council Member Lampson. Aye. Mayor Sandu. Aye. Motion moved, uh, motion passed to five to zero. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item is City Manager's Office. Coronavirus COVID-19 update, Mr. Hines. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Lorenzo Hines, City Manager. Um, I have more somber news to uh, share with the Council and staff and members of the public regarding the impact of the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, in Sacramento County, the number of cases has gone up since our last meeting, and all of these statistics are measured from our last council meeting. So since our last meeting, the number of cases in Sacramento County has gone up 4%. Um, that's a round number of 966 additional cases since our last meeting. Uh, the number of deaths um, in Sacramento County um, has increased by six, a total of six or 1%. And so hopefully that rate slows down even further. In the city of Galt, the number of cases has risen by 5% or 31 individuals. The number of deaths in the city of Galt has held firm at eight. And so we're, we're thankful for that. And uh, Mayor, in addition to that, we um, the individual county tier assignments are normally updated every Tuesday, but due to the election, uh, the update has been postponed until tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. The most recent data we have from the state was released last Tuesday. And at that time, Sacramento County had not qualified for the orange tier. And with an average daily case rate of 5.7 cases per 100,000. Um, we need to be lower than 3.9 uh, to qualify for orange. And we also had a positivity rate of 2.8%. Um, we will have an updated, uh, we will have updated numbers tomorrow when the California Department of Health uh, releases this week's data. And earlier I misspoke and indicated that the number of cases in Sacramento County and the city of Galt were measured from the last council meeting. They were actually measured from last Tuesday. And Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Hines. Uh, council member, any question, any comment on this agenda item, but this is not an action item, just an information item. If it's not, then I'm going to move the next agenda item is Park and Recreation Department. Subject Park, uh, park and Street Landscaping Concern. Uh, Item H3, uh, Mr. Sleese. And Mr. Mayor, I will uh, lead off on this particular item. Oh. All right, go, go ahead, Mr. Hine. Okay, and then Mr. Solis and Mr. Selling and then uh, uh, um, uh, Ms. Tyson will also join in. So I wanted to first of all, sort of frame this particular issue. Um, we brought, we are bringing these items before the council as a result of our current landscaper um, losing their uh, state license and having to terminate the current contract um, very quickly here. And so staff had to move quickly to come up with options uh, to address the ongoing landscape concerns. Um, as you know, the grass will keep on growing um, 
irregardless of whether or not we've made a decision and we prefer not to have that landscaping get out of control. So we moved quickly to come up with these options to put before council in this particular item. And then the item that follows this one, we've actually got a uh, option that we wanna recommend to you. But I also wanted to mention that this is not the final solution for funding our parks programs, including landscapes, in light of the issues that we have with the LNLs, the uh, revenue decline with the Galt market, and all and a number of other issues. So this is not the final solution. We are working on the final solution um, within um, myself and city staff. And so we're working on that internally. When that strategy is ready to be unveiled, we will bring that before the council and the public um, for uh, discussion. And um, so right as of now, I'm gonna step aside and let uh, Director Solis uh, 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 make the presentation from going forward. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, this is gonna be a, a joint effort, uh, primarily between me and Mike Selling, our Public Works Director. So I'm gonna turn over this first part of the presentation um, to Mike. If we can pull up that presentation on the screen. Can you, can you see it Armando? I do not see it on mine. Okay, can anybody else see it? No. Okay. How about now? There we go. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, Mike Selling, I'm your Public Works Director. And uh, we'll kind of get started here on the presentation. So once it goes to the slide view, um, we'll go ahead to the next slide. <clears throat> So what we're gonna to discuss tonight in this presentation uh, is first the lighting and landscape districts, and then we'll talk about the current landscape contract, uh, which Armando, I think will take it at that point. And then what the uh, proposed uh, landscape solution is, and as well, uh, he'll discuss the adopt a park program. Next slide. So the lighting and landscape districts, next slide. So the city has three lighting and landscape districts and uh, essentially they are the Northeast Lighting and Landscape District which was established in 1990 and that resides in Fund 32. The second district which was formed later in 1990 uh, called the West Side Lighting and Landscape District and that resides in Fund 33. And then the third one that we have is Lighting and Landscape District number three uh, and that uh, was formed later in 2005, and that resides in Fund 37. And I just wanna pause and, and say you'll hear LLDs, the term LLDs or LNLs, uh, basically just you know shorthand for lighting and landscape districts. Next slide. So this slide shows essentially the uh, the budgets for these three uh, districts with regard to the current budget, the two-year budget. And as you can see down uh, at the bottom, uh, district, the Northeast District and the West Side District are running uh, deficits in both years. And district number three is, uh, while it's uh, still in the black, it's, as you can tell, it's getting very close. And the, the other thing I guess I wanna point out is that none of these uh, districts have any capital reserve funds for capital replacement. Uh, next slide. So this is the map just to give you a geographical sense uh, of where these districts are. The yellow representing the Northeast, hence in the Northeast area of the city, uh, basically east of Highway 99. And then the West Side uh, district, which is the pink or magenta color, and as you can see, there are multiple areas that are in that district on both sides of the freeway. And then the third one in blue is the LLD number three. And again, multiple areas, although it's uh, mostly on the west side uh, of the highway. Next slide. So this map basically, uh, and it's a little bit fuzzy, it looks like on my screen, I don't know about yours, 
but uh, essentially this slide shows the various park facilities, uh, the year that they were constructed, and, and they're color coded too. Uh, you know, as you look at the border colors, whether it's yellow or the red or the blue, the red would correspond to the pink or magenta color that I referenced earlier for the west side. The uh, yellow is, is consistent on the northeast uh, LNL, and then the blue is consistent on the District 3 LNL. And then you'll see also several uh, facilities with a uh, black border. Those are typically older facilities that were um, uh, in the white area. They're not in any of the three LNL districts. And so that'll be important uh, that we'll talk about later. Next slide. So there are several challenges uh, associated with these uh, LNL districts. And uh, as I think, you know, it's been noted in some of the past presentations uh, from um, uh, when we went through the budget cycle. So as per the white areas that you saw on the map, uh, those areas don't have any assessment uh, tied to them. So for the lighting that's in those areas and then the uh, landscape uh, facilities in those areas, there is no revenue that's uh, tied to those facilities. And those uh, funds essentially have to come out of the general fund to pay for those. The two earlier districts formed in, in the nine, 1990, the Northeast and the West side, uh, they don't have an annual escalator tied to them. That means that there's no incremental increase to keep pace with inflation on the assessments that are charged. So the assessments that were set in 1990 are still the ones that uh, are being uh, assessed today. So, and, uh, you know, I think as we all know, since that time, 30 years later here, uh, en energy costs have gone up as well as other operations and maintenance costs. And so there's a need to, to, uh, to make up that revenue shortfall. Uh, I just kind of want to pause Essentially, you know, what a dollar bought in 1990, uh, it's, it's dropped almost 60%. It's only buying about 40 cents worth today. So there's that much of a drop in the last 30 years. And then uh, unlike the other two districts, LLD number three does have an escalator in it. However, uh, as you saw in the earlier slide, uh, it's, it's barely keeping pace. And, and again, there's no uh, capital reserve uh, funds in that. Uh, in order to increase the, uh, the assessments, uh, a Proposition 218 vote is needed, and that requires a 50% plus one vote to, uh, to um, assess the, the new uh, tax uh, amount. So that's a bit of a high bar to clear. Uh, and then uh, there's the cost of the election as well. And then lastly, and historically, um, the city's general fund has been used to cover these deficits. Uh, for the, the white areas I noted before. And then I should have also noted uh, that, well, I already said it actually, the, uh, the capital replacement funding uh, is lacking on these. So with that, I will turn it over to Armando to uh, cover the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. So we're gonna discuss our current landscape contract with Crossroads. Um, Lorenzo, if you can go to the next slide. Wanted to give you a little background. So as discussed, our LNLs continue to fall deeper into deficit and need to be subsidized by our general fund. In order to provide a balanced budget, council approved a reduced service landscape contract, reducing mowing services from weekly to monthly. Next slide. I was notified on October 1st that Crossroads uh, would be terminating their contract as of November 15th. Um, when this contract went out to RFP, we received two bids, one from Crossroads, which came in just under $300,000, and the second was nearly doubled at, near, at just under $600,000. We consulted with our attorneys to see if we could resign, uh, reassign this contract to another company without going through the RFP process, and it was determined that our procurement policy does not allow for it. Next slide, please. That left us with these uh, five options here, and I'm gonna just go over them because I'll go into detail um, into them in our next uh, item. So we could go out to RFP, we could sign a short-term contract with the company while we evaluate the situation and enter into a cooperative purchasing agreement, piggyback off a, another government con uh, contract, 
or explore bringing landscape services in house. And that's, that's the area where we're gonna be talking about in our next item. So our, our proposed uh, landscape solutions. So as I talked that we're, we're leaning towards in-house landscape services. And obviously there's always pros and cons to each, um, each item. If you can go to the next slide, Lorenzo. So the pros, better quality work, being able to take pride in, this is our city, this is our, our job. We get detailed work at no additional cost. So Mike Selling and I went out and we were looking at areas in downtown and we were saying, well, whose responsibility? It's sidewalks, so it's public works. Well, when you guys are out here, you know, mowing down weeds, why couldn't you just do the sidewalk? Well, because I pay a contractor to do that and he pay, we pay him by the square foot. So if I asked him to do the uh, sidewalk, there would be an extra charge. With our guys, the expectation would be, hey, you see a weed, I don't care if it's on a sidewalk, you go knock it out. Less manage, management supervision. And that's really uh, me is what we're talking about. Right now I'm spending a lot of time um, working with these contractors, uh, making sure that they're providing their contract services, uh, providing punch lists. Um, it, it's, I'm spending at least eight to 12 hours a week just on the contractor. Uh, quicker customer service resolution. If there's an issue, we're able to pivot and send our guys to deal with the issue. Right now, our contractor provides us a con uh, schedule that they stick to. So if there's a problem somewhere else, they will not be moving it from one area to the next where we have the ability to do that. So our con cons on the in-house landscape services are startup costs to purchase equipment, maintaining the equipment, retaining employees, and the training employees. And there are more pros and cons, but those are the major ones that we have uh, with in-house landscape services. Next slide, please, thank you. So we're gonna talk about an adopt park program. This is another program that could help us um, in providing a better level of service in our park. I just wanted to go over a couple of pros and cons with them as we're not gonna tackle that issue today. Um, pros will uh, promote community involvement, helps maintain and improve the park system. Uh, neighbors take ownership of their local park and help staff provide oversight. It, you know, when people call and, and point out issues, I, I thank them because we have so many parks, so many sprinklers that we can't catch everything. Um, so I appreciate the extra eyes. The cons, unexperienced volunteers, risk of injury to volunteers, coordination time, and the big one, liability. So that, um, that concludes my portion of the presentation and it's the end. I don't know if Lorenzo has any closing remarks to council or not. No, I don't. I, I think that that um, presentation uh, from Director Solis and Director Selling uh, pretty much laid out some of the analytical processes we had to go through uh, to take an immediate step to address uh, the fact that these services are going away um, within 10 days. Or a little more than 10 days, let's just put it that way. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if you guys have any on that presentation. Uh, Mr. Sleeves, uh, uh, this item, we, this is not the action item, right? The next item is the action. This is just a... It, it's just information and overview of, of our current situation. Okay. Uh, any council member want to go first? Rich, did you have your hand raised? Did you want to? No? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I know, Armando, you and I spoke for probably 45 minutes or something the other day. I appreciate your time and, and breaking all this down. Um, do you think, in your opinion, that uh, if we were to look at procuring another contractor for the short term, um, that is even possible that we would even get somebody for the same price that we were paying Crossroads before they left? I don't believe we will. Um, uh, and the fact that the second bid came in at almost double. Um, trying to get a short-term contract. Um, a lot of people don't have extra equipment or personnel to, 
to send out to these locations. They would have to purchase and hire people too, for the most part. Uh, the one company that I did talk to wanted a, a one-year contract um, at a minimum to come in. Um, I, uh, I had um, an appointment to speak to a second contractor, uh, but uh, we evaluated the in-house process and we decided to go that way at one this point. Okay. Um, I think I'll wait until, so we're gonna, the next item is the action item on this, is that correct? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll hold off on my other comments until after that. Thank you. Any other council member wanna make, uh, uh, go ahead, uh, Vice Mayor Lizano. Yeah, thank you, Armando and Mike and uh, City Manager um, Hines for the presentation. Um, I've spent a lot of time on this on not only this item, but the, the next item. And um, I shot um, uh, some questions off earlier in the week. Uh, actually, I think it was Sunday night. And um, <clears throat> so I have a few questions that I wanna get out now and then probably more later. But um, so my, my question is, is that in, and this is based on a response that we received uh, just today. Uh, in terms of our options, you laid out five options, A through E. And uh, my understanding from one of the responses was, according to the city attorney, the, uh, the only two viable options were to re, uh, uh, not renew the contract and either go out to RFP and or attempt to bring it in-house. I guess my question is, if that's accurate, um, and I'm sure I have no reason to believe it's not, but have we looked at um, contracting with other public agencies uh, rather than a contractor who's looking to um, have a profit margin, um, you know, we're, we're in a tight spot here. And, and I, like I explained to the city manager, I, you know, I, I'm not a, a person and that wants to put off a decision. Um, I believe that that, uh, that can harm us. Uh, but in this particular case, um, I feel like my back's against the wall. Um, and we, as an organization, I take, I take some responsibility for this. You know, we, we went out to bid and had two bids in June of 2019. What the one that we went with was half the price. We should have been actively doing whatever we could, knowing that that could go away any day because it was half the price. And so, um, I, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but my question, I guess, for the city attorney, if that's appropriate is, is there an option uh, that we can do to explore looking to other government agencies. And I've said this, if I've said it once, I've said it 10 times in, in my two years on this council. Have, can we look at that? And is that an option? If not the city attorney, some. Kimberly, are you out so, there? She's a mute. If uh, or am I can I address. I can address a little bit of that. Um, so we, this wasn't something that we had planned on. Uh, we, there was no way we could know that they would lose their their state license to perform landscape services on there. Uh, we had already been talking to the to our attorneys because we were trying to figure out what we would be doing, um, anticipating in the fact that we would not renew our contract or extend our contract. And um, to be quite honest, I was looking to terminate the contract now and get our ducks in a row. Unfortunately, um, Crossroads um, pulled out before we were able to get those ducks in a row. Um, in talking to Kimberly and I forget the other attorney's name within the uh, BB and K, uh, we, we have looked at some of those options and I was gonna go into that in our, in our next uh, item, but I, I can't go into them now. Uh, we did go, my Armando, if, it's, if it's more appropriate for the next item, I don't have a problem. I just wanted yeah. to get that one out. Um, and then, uh, and so I will, I'll look forward to an answer that okay. on the next item. Um, I, again, I just want to reiterate before I move on to my next point on this presentation is that we as a, as a policy organization or policy group should have done, I, I believe, uh, done a little bit better job knowing um, if it's predictable, it's preventable. Um, and by going and having a contractor um, to price the, the same work uh, on an RFP at half the price, and that's who we went with, 
and, and, and to some degree, maybe rightfully so, we should have we should have predicted that that was going to be a problem uh, sooner than later. And so, uh, like I said, I take responsibility as a, as a policy figure in this organization uh, to, to know that that should have been done. One of the other things I wanted to point out, at least um, just briefly, is in the pros and cons of hiring internal. Um, yeah. I'm, I've lost my page here. I apologize. Um, Would you like me to retrieve the slide? You know, I have it printed out with notes on it. So, <laughs> okay. all right. Let me see here. Okay, here it is. Um, I think that, at least in my analysis of this of this um, presentation, um, some of the the cons really jump out to me. Uh, and, and, and two of them are retaining employees and training them. Um, and I know we're going to talk more about this in the next presentation, but I want to point it out because it's in this presentation as a con. I see it as a huge con. Um, it's, it's, I, I've been, in the, I've been a, a policymaker in the park and recreation business for a long time. It's just hard for me to wrap my head around um, knowing what the costs for employees are that it would be uh, less expensive to come in-house. Now, again, coming in-house may be the right thing to do. Uh, and, I, and that'll be the analysis that we go through soon. But um, my concern is, is that if that's the case with all those costs that the contractor does not have to build, bill for, um, like ongoing costs of retirement and the increasing costs of insurance and all of those employee costs that I've mentioned here in the last couple of months uh, and concerned about, um, it, it's hard to hard for me to wrap my head around that it's cheaper. And if it is, if it is less expensive to go in-house, then I think we need to look at what we're paying our employees. And that goes to retention. And so I don't want it to be misunderstood that I am suggesting that we don't hire within or, or hire a, a group for in-house. Um, I don't want it to be misconstrued that I think we should if we do that, we should pay more money. I just think as part of that analysis, if that's built in, then we need to do look at a, a larger issue of whether or not we're going to be able to train and, repan, and retain these employees. Um, and so I will save the rest of my comments for the next item. I'd, I'd like to respond to a little bit of that, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. I, I want you to know that we had no way of predicting that uh, Crossroads would pull out of the contract. Uh, the employee that held that license left the company. Um, it's not something that we could anticipate. We were already planning for a decision that had to be made in June. And obviously that's eight, you know, seven, eight months away uh, as we were planning for that. Um, but my assumption is that if that employee had stayed with that company, we'd still, they'd still be performing this landscape services. Um, I agree that we need to look at paying our employees at what we're paying them because our minimum wage is compacted a lot of our, our upper tiers and we're starting to see that especially here in parks and recreation. So I don't disagree with you in that part. So those are the two comments I just wanted to make on that. Um, and uh, I, I'd like to um, add some additional comments as well. And um, if you can all follow me to the agenda report for this item, uh, page two of five. And on page two of five, uh, Director Solis and his team have laid out uh, the different options. And there is more detail related to the different options. And so I, I wanted you all to just understand that, that we're trying to address the time passage here, uh, because the more we wait, the worse the parks look. And as you all know, the city's identity is tightly associated with the quality and care of our parks. And so knowing that the vendor was going away on November 15th, we knew we needed to be ready by the 16th or 17th. 
And so we looked at these five options and on page two of five, we, we lay out the five here. And uh, the first one is conduct a full RFP process. And so if we went through a normal RFP process, this would take approximately two to three months to get a vendor in and on board and in place and actually mowing and taking care of our, our uh, parks, landscape, trails, corridors. Um, we have heard concerns from our citizens over the last couple of months of parks and the way those parks look after one month of no mowing. So our concern was, you know, we, we can't let those parks go for two to three months. So the RFP process, while it's a valid process, was not timely enough for us. Utilizing a cooperative purchasing agreement is the next bullet. And we could enter into a cooperative purchasing arrangements with another governmental entity without a separate competitive uh, bidding by the city. If the agency has solicited, uh, uh, solicited bids and awarded the contract for goods or services, which the city desires to obtain, um, and, the and the participation in the purchase is agreeable to the bidder awarded the contract. So not only would we have to go with the, the, the governmental entity, but we'd also have to um, ensure that the bidder, whoever won the contract, is providing services to our, uh, to our standard and uh, is also willing to extend their um, duties uh, to cover the city of Galt. So that's, that can be complex as well, and that will also take time. Um, piggybacking off a current, another governmental contract, uh, we explored piggybacking um, to our neighbors to the north, uh, Consume These Community Services District and their landscaping maintenance contract and found that if we elected to do this and the company was willing to piggyback the contract, the city would pay significantly more than what was budgeted. So, so we've got time and now we've got money um, factors playing against us. We could sign a short-term contract with another company um, under a competitive uh, procurement threshold of 30,000. Um, yeah, we can still explore this, uh, but again, it will take time to explore this. Um, and then we bring you the option of performing the landscape maintenance services in-house. Now I realize there's concerns about um, the employees and the additional cost of those employees. We have done our best analysis of what this option will uh, cost and it will cost additional dollars. And so while we can use the dollars that we had set aside to pay this contract, to pay the majority of these expenses, we will have additional expenses in the current year and the budget year, um, or sorry, biennial year one and biennial year two. And um, so there are additional expenses. With those expenses are noted on page five of five um, we're running an additional expenses in budget year one of 53,000. And in budget year two, we're running additional expenses of 76,000. And so while we tried to make this budget neutral, um, it is not budget neutral, but we will look at salary savings and various other cost saving measures in the mid year um, that we could use to address these additional these additional costs. And um, Director Solis will give you more detail when we get to the next agenda item. Um, I can tell you that the cost of pensions, um, workers' compensation, um, uh, disability um, have all been factored into these, these calculations. Um, I can also tell you that overtime has also been factored into these calculations. Um, and I can also let you know that we have an unfunded pension liability and because these employees are new, they're not part of that liability. The unfunded pension liability has to do with past employees or should I say past employees. And um, so um, while they may contribute, it, contribute to it in the end, it'll be pretty small. In addition, 
this is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a, a temporary measure, or it may be temporary, it may be permanent, but we will be reevaluating the effectiveness of this option um, in 18 months. And that's when we'll come to a conclusion, but we'll be evaluating this option the whole time it's in play in reality to see if it's working for us. And at the end of that 18 months, we're going to reach some conclusion and contracting out again is still on the table. But for right now, we just need to act because we just don't want to see our parks. Um, um, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, neglected for, uh, you know, the time period, the time that it takes for us to do the analytical work here. And, um, and that's, so I just wanted to make that comment and bring those pages to council and the public's attention. Mr. Mayor, I have several comments, but I, we keep talking about another item. Is this all the same item or are we? I, I was leaving it, let's um, move on the next item when we take a action, uh, if it's appropriate, or we want everybody want to make a, but it's like a both item is very much can be related. We want to make a decision of that and move the next one, or this is just the information, or we can open the next item. I don't know how the council want to do it. I think in, in fairness of uh, the public, in terms of uh, talking about the item, uh, we, we should move to the next one because unless oh. other people have questions on the first, uh, but we have started discussing as council member farmers pointed out the next I, item. I agree with Rich. All right, so we wanna to move to the next item, right? Uh, council member Campion? Yeah, I, I would think that most appropriate. I mean, we've kind of finished up what the options are, and now we're looking at potential solutions. So I think that's the appropriate move. All right. So we're going to uh, Council Member Farmer, or con uh, no, Council Member Campion or Lanson. Did you guys have any question, comment on this item? Otherwise, I can move to the next item so we can have all discuss. No comments on the first item. I'm ready for the second item. I'm ready for the second item also. I already talked to staff, go ahead. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> so let's uh, go to move to the next uh, agenda item is H4, in-house landscaping maintenance service. Uh, Mr. Hines or Mr. Solis. So I just wanted to uh, reiterate that this is, we analyzed the options, we looked at the time factors, we looked at the uh, the budget factors, and this is the option that we are recommending at this time. Uh, council has the option to move in any direction it wants, but this is the option that council is recommending to address uh, the growth and the quality of um, uh, care uh, that we need to um, uh, apply to our parks and trails and corridors. And I'll turn it over to Director Solis. Good evening again. Uh... Uh, Mayor and City Council Armando Solis, Parks and Rec Director. Uh, for this item, I will be discussing bringing uh, landscape maintenance services in-house. Do the next slide, please. So we pretty much discussed this in, in the previous uh, presentation. I just wanted to put this in here in case anybody looks at it, you know, a few years down the road, it, it's in this section here. Uh, next section. Next slide, please. So this is where I'm gonna go into detail on what we've, we've done and how we've analyzed this. So the RFP process would take two to three months to conduct and start this contract. Um, and obviously this contract's ending on November 15th. Um, when we met on B, we can sign a short-term contract with the company while we evaluate the situation. When we met with the contract, they wanted a, a contractor, they wanted a one-year extension to proceed uh, they weren't interested in a short-term contract. And uh, on a short-term short contract, we are held to a $30,000 threshold um, according to our policy. Uh, C, we, we looked into uh, to enter into a cooperative purchasing agreement with government, government agencies. We looked through the GPA, U.S. Communities, and CMAS to see if there's any contracts out there. If we could and we could not find any. 
Um, and D, piggybacking off government contract. When we researched CSD's contract um, and evaluated the price uh, that they were paying and we, were, we had budgeted, we would wind up paying an additional $40,000, an estimated $40,000 more um, if and if they were willing to do that. Um, which left us with E, exploring uh, bringing landscape services in house. And that's the option that we had decided to move forward with at that point after evaluating our five options. Next slide. So before we go into the cost of bringing landscape services in house, I'd like to show you what it is that we're maintaining as it's more than just parks. So in our red, you can see um, corridors like Carillion, uh, Walnut, Marengo, Lincoln Way, A Street. And we have about 23 acres of streetscapes in the city that we maintain. Our green um, areas are, are 21 parks equaling about 60 acres. Yellow is our open trails, uh, which usually run along our, our excuse me, it's open areas that typically run along our trail systems. There's about 6.5 acres of open space that uh, we help maintain. And in blue are the city facilities, City Hall, PD, MSC, Parks and Rec building. And those equal about five acres full of, um, of landscaping. Next slide. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about money um, as, as we are having budget issues. So in the left column, you'll see the remaining part of this fiscal year. And in the right column, you'll see next fiscal year. Uh, the first line is, are the direct costs for staffing, which include one full-time senior mark parks maintenance worker, two part-time uh, maintenance workers, and two um, part-time parks workers. Um, you know, you hear a lot of part-time in those um, direct uh, staff costs. And I think that's where, where you'll see the cost savings and why we're able to bring this in-house. This isn't optimal but it, it's what we had to do to get that within our budgeted amount of money that we had. Uh, the second line includes ongoing costs such as fuel for the mowers, green waste dumping, um, equipment services and repair. Uh, the third line are one-time costs that include buying two mowers, trimmers, blowers, a trailer and an aerator in the first year and a, uh, um, a wood chipper in the second year. Um, the budgeted line indicates the amount left from co Crossroads Country this year, excuse me, Crossroads contract this year, and then the 310 is what we budgeted for next year's uh, payments. Direct cost difference um, in this year is 14,879, and next year would be 23,431. Adding in the direct, uh, indirect costs, typically called central service costs, we'd be, have a shortfall of 68,000 this year and 100,000 next year, or excuse me, those are the costs for the two years, leaving us a, a difference of uh, 53,000 in this year and 76 next year. So, um, you know, but we, we're looking at those costs on an ongoing basis. Next slide. So what we're gonna, before we get into, um, into the, what we're gonna ask you to approve. I wanted um, to hit on number two and number three of this uh, approval. Um, staff has reviewed the full-time positions in the department as requested by council during most uh, recent budget workshops, resulting in the elimination of a long time frozen unfunded uh, position of parks supervisor. Uh, that position has been open since 2008, that number two. Um, adding a, a senior parks maintenance worker position to address the Senate House proposal. And that's where you get uh, a net gain of positions. We're, we're taking one out and putting one in. So we're asking you to adopt a resolution approving uh, the changes to the approved budget appropriations, eliminate of one recreation supervisor position, addition of one full-time senior parks maintenance worker, addition of two part-time maintenance worker ones, and addition of two part-time parks worker twos. Um, next slide. And then this is where I'd be happy to answer any of your questions that you guys have right now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sleese. 
thank you, Mr. Hines. You give us a presentation. Before I move to my next uh, council member, I have a few questions myself. Uh, first of all, you said, uh, did you, when you say is full RFP, what was a hot, it's been two to three months. Two to three months is a lot of difference. It can be done in two months. That, that would depend on, on the company. So even with Crossroads, when we issued them the RFP, we went through the process and we said, hey, how soon can you start? They needed about a month to get, get their stuff together, buy their equipment, okay, and get their you, staff in process. So Mr. Sleaze, can you give me detail? When you go to the RFP, what's your process uh, to so do it? You... it? It's the standard city process and where we send out the RFP online. Uh, how, how many days? Um, Tina, can you help me with what the those days are? Do you know off, off the top of your head what that process is? Off, I don't know. Off, I thought it was around, is it 15, 20 days at least? I'm not sure. I, I thought it was three weeks that we, we yeah. pulled so it they, out. Uh, so they, they they did it around 20 days. 20 days, that's the requirement minimum, right? Uh, Kimberly, yes. As you telling me this is the minimum requirement, 20 days to- Well, there's not a minimum requirement for this type of an RFP, but I, I think we've usually allowed 20, like, like Armando said, I think it's usually been around three weeks. I don't think the procurement procedures state a specific time frame, but usually you need a left time to, to allow people to respond and uh, put their proposals together. So we had a hard time, I think, the last go around getting proposals. Yes, the, my, my actually question was, it could be done in two months, but we're just saying two to three months. We're looking at the previous, what happened, but it, it, act, it, it you know, you don't know, it might be done in two months or might be three months. Right, and that's... Mr. Mr. Mayor, if I, if I may, um, I can tell you in my career, I have seen these process, processes take anywhere from 15 to 30 days. Um, okay. And you want to you want to make sure you leave it out there long enough to get quality um, entities bidding on the contract, but you don't want to pull it too soon uh, because you may not they may not be able to respond quickly enough. So, you know, in order to get the right folks in place, you're going to need at least three three to four weeks just just for the RFP, and then you've got to go through a selection process, and that probably will take another two weeks, and then you've got to negotiate with whoever won. And hopefully that's all taken care of in the RFP. So hopefully the prices, it fits within the RFP. But if the prices, if the lowest price is higher than, than we have mentioned in the RFP, then we've got a problem right there and we're gonna need more time. Um, and then once everything is settled, then the uh, contractor has to then schedule the start dates, uh, make sure they have the right equipment in place to provide the services to us. So. While we we would love to say that this is a this is a one month process in government, it, it's never a one month process. Well, I I, I do understand, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, can I also ask a question? I mean, um, I, I'm that that time frame that I just heard assumes that we have an RFP on the shelf ready to go. Is that the case, or do we have? time that we've got to go back and look at the prior RFP to update it based on changes that have been made uh, or additional facilities added. I mean, I, I don't know that you're ready to go out for an RFP tomorrow. Am I, is that correct or am I? That, that's correct. It would probably take us about a week to just, there's there's some issues that we found with the last contract that we would want to tighten up some loopholes that we found that we would want to close. So we'd have to redo the contract as we send it out. We would have to, um, basically make sure everything's in there in that new RFP. Because okay. there, there will be some uh, landscaping coming on online in the next couple of years. All right, uh, thank you. My next question is, uh, you know, when we, I'm looking at pros and cons, uh, just kind of piggyback uh, Vice Mayor Lozano. Uh, you know, I, I, I do understand if we're doing the in-house, it can be better quality. But you know, when we buying the equipment, 
if we thinking this is not a permanent thing, it can be temporary, but at the end, when we can dispose that equipment, this is also the value of the equipment too. Uh, the second, the approach is detail work on no additional cost, right? But if, you, if we know whatever be additional cost on extra work, why we don't include in a contract? For any piece of work that's done by a contractor, they're gonna want payment for that. If I, if I ask the guys to do a, an additional area that's close to what they're doing, they're still getting paid by the hour. And what are you thinking, what, what might be additional work in, in the contract? Kind of like stuff that uh, Mike and I talked about. If there's a sidewalk area or an area next to some landscaping that isn't necessarily landscape, but weeds growing out of, out of a sidewalk that they would not even touch, I would expect that they'd go over there and, and take care of things like that. Yeah, but, but if, if other employee working, if we're going to give them a more work, it also can be more time on our employee's time sheet. Uh, then my, my next, uh, look, I'm looking at on the count, a retaining employees and training employees. And uh, we know when we in-house, is landscaping work is, is, is not an easy work. Is not your working just working on a plain field. There can be a chance to fell and slip and all the workmen come. And uh, you know, I, I'm still just not convinced, you know, with the contractor at in-house employees. I, I, I do understand we need to do uh, this thing. And if there is other option, I'm looking for well, one, uh, one other option is, uh, sign a short-term contract with the company while city evaluating the solution. I know this is a imminent, this is we need to done something. If there is why uh, the staff going to waive that, uh, that situation, like in high risk short-term contract, then we fully analysis. What will be the cost if we doing the in-house uh, landscaping? Because we have to hire the employer, we have to buy the equipment, and kind of I, I'm looking for something full analysis. What we saving or what we extra? If the extra, how much extra exactly we can cost? Because there is we also taking the risk to apply. That's my knowledge, and I think a lot of, uh, including the council member, uh, you have. I think we have the knowledge and skill to the employee, how we can handle the employee. And also like the same thing, the minimum wages. You have to, you know, in order to retain this employee to do the job, you know, you have to pay very share of whatever the market. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, this is like a couple of my question. Now I'm gonna give the chance to my other council member. He can make the comment, then uh, I will make some more comment uh, uh, in, in, in the end. Would you like a response to a couple of those having to do with the finances? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh. Okay. Claire Tyson, finance director. Just wanted to mention the equipment that would be purchased under this recommendation would be owned by the city. So if at some point the council decided to go back out to a contract, that equipment would still be owned by the city and could be used in other areas. Um, such as out at the plants, that kind of thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the cost of the contract currently is around 25,000 a month. So that short-term contract, which is limited by our policy to 30,000 would be for a little bit over a month. That's the span of time. Thank you. Uh, Council member Farmer. Yes, thank you. So as I mentioned earlier, I, I spoke with Armando in, in depth and I had lots of questions I went over. I wanted like to start kind of circle back a little bit about our original decision that we made, you know, to, to cut budget. I mean, clearly when we looked at our original bidding, you know, 300,000 versus 597,000, that's clearly a red flag as Rich mentioned earlier, but I wanted to, I wanted to kind of defend again, the decision that we made then at that time, 
Um, anytime you get a low bid, it's obviously, you know, concerning. Uh, I did check references on that as well as um, I did talk to Armando at the time and they had check references, but I checked them on my own and his references came back good. Now, um, was I still leery of that contract and think whether or not they were going to be able to perform? Uh, I, I was very much had my doubts. But at the time when we're trying to cut a million dollars out of our budget, if a contractor says we can do this job and this is what we can do it for, and um, and their references check out. I mean, we have to roll the dice on that. So I stand by that decision all day long. Did it work out? No, um, they weren't able to keep up. They obviously bit off more than they can chew. So fast forward to now, um, I'm looking at all these options and I actually don't really think, I mean, I don't really think that we're back is against the wall. I think this is an opportunity for us. I think looking at the fact that we can spend about 50 some thousand dollars more money than we're spending now on which was basically the bargain basement contract and get two mows a month by in-house staff. And, and just regarding the wages, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Claire or Armando, but the, we are not paying minimum wage for these jobs. The, and these jobs do factor in the increase in minimum wage that is coming. They do factor in all work comp and all the associated costs with, all those are factored into this, this proposal. Um, the procurement of, of equipment at 40 some thousand dollars, um, uh, you know, if we end up not needing that in 18 months or whatever, and we keep it or sell it, whatever, is, is not really much bearing on, on my thought. I, I think, first off, I, for one, everybody knows me, I'm very picky about the parks. I'm the one that's been texting Armando, hey, what's going on with this over here? I drove by, it looks, looks bad, can you, whatever. I know that he has been chasing and babysitting these guys constantly. It, it, it's been taking, and then he's been putting out our own staff, you know, to, to pick up the slack on, on this contract. Um, we clearly don't have an option to go out for a temporary contract with only 30,000 to work with. That's only gonna buy us a month. Um, the grass is growing, it doesn't stop. We've been catching flack as council members, as staff on this, on this, this grass thing for a while. If, even if we were to go back out and get other bids, in my opinion, it, 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 I've been a contractor for 25 years and I've subcontracted work myself and I know some of you have more experience on the municipal level doing it, but it's, in my opinion, based on the two bids we got last time, it's very unlikely that we're going to have somebody come back at anything near to the 299000 that Crossroads did. And if they did, we're going to be getting the same, for lack of a better word, the same crappy service that we were getting this, the first time. So we're not going to be any better off. And if we go through that process and the grass grows and we rush that process and we come back and we come back with numbers like we had before, where is that going to leave us? Then we're back, circling back to the exact same spot we're in now. I think based on what I've been shown that this is a perfect example of if you want the job done right, you do it yourself. And Armando has given me his word. And I know Armando knows the Parks and Recreation Department better than any of us. He's been in it a long time. And he told me that he can assure me that he will deliver a quality product with what he's been asking for. I even asked him, are you sure that four guys, four extra guys is going to be enough? Why would I ask for five? Are you sure that's enough? And he said to me that he believes that they've done sufficient legwork with Mike Selling and his staff, um, the other Armando walking around, taking a look at everything. And they've, they've evaluated the, the, the um, schedule that Crossroads was doing. They've figured out how they, it could be done better. Um, our guys know our city. I think they'll, they'll take pride in our city because it's their, it's their city. It's not someone else. I think this whole finger pointing thing is going to be a problem when you're contracting out because like you said, they're only going to do a certain thing. They're not going to walk six feet and take a, a weed out or a little patch of grass. And then you have to figure out well, who's responsible for that. Then they have to call public works and say, well, is it us? Is it you? And then send another guy out. So we're always going to be constantly running around trying to pick up the slack. I think if we just bring this in house, we're not looking at much more money. We're looking at 50 some thousand this year. We're looking at 70 some thousand that year. I don't even think we're going to have a contract, a contractor bid. This is even to come even remotely close to those numbers. And, and if, and if I'm wrong and in 18 months, we feel like, you know what, it just didn't work out as well as we thought we can always go back out to bid. We have the time to do that. We have the time to solicit that. So I fully support this. I, I'm totally behind it. 100%. I've given it a lot of thought. I've looked at it and I, and I am very, very, I hold people accountable and Armando knows that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always on him asking um, to even Tom before you Lorenzo knew I was always asking what's going on with this park. How come this isn't mode? Why does it look like this? What, what, who's doing that? Who's doing this? And, and if, if I'm getting those assurances that this is going to get taken care of and we're getting twice the work 
for just a little bit more money, I think it's a no, it's a no brainer. So that's my, that's my thoughts on it at this point. I'd like to hear my other council members opinion, but that that's how I feel. Can I just comment real quick, Kurt, on that? Yeah. I, it's just not the group that we're hiring that will be doing the work. We will be utilizing some of the staff that we have on currently hired to help these guys take care of, to get us to those two mows a month. So I, I just want to make sure you know that these five guys will be dedicated to this, but we will be supplementing that with some of my weekend crew and my night crew, just so there's no uh, misunderstanding on that. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I would echo um, the, the the same thoughts that that uh, Councilmember Farmer has, has just stated. I I believe that you know, looking at what the alternatives are, um, and given the circumstances of where we are, that this is the best option. Um, whether it's the best long term option, that remains to be seen. But I think that um, it's a viable option at this point. Uh, it costs a little more, and but you're going to get more a, a higher service level. The other thing that that may be worthwhile looking at down the road, if we do end up purchasing the equipment, you may look at a hybrid contract with a landscape company, whereby the city does certain functions and the contractor does others. I don't know whether that's you know financially viable or or advantageous. But it certainly would be an advantage to be able to utilize that equipment that has been purchased, you know, if you could work it into the solution economically. But um, in, in closing, I, I think the report gave uh, uh, a, put forth the options that that I believe are available um, and has evaluated each one correctly. Um, you know, the, the only question would be is if you wanted to up the period instead of waiting a full 18 months to look at an RFP, maybe you look at one for the next fiscal year. Uh, but I agree with Mr. Farmer. Again, I don't think you're going to find one for 299000 like we had. Uh, it may be just an exercise, uh, depending on how much time, money, and effort staff feels is uh, uh, appropriate to spend on that exercise. But I think uh, where we are today, doing it in-house, I think when you'll have better quality control, you'll have a higher level of service. Um, and I think that there is room, as the city manager pointed out, to look at other cost-saving measures throughout the entire budget uh, as he goes through the budget next year. So, or at the midterm budget, as he stated. So I, I, I fully support staff's uh, recommendation at this time. Thank you. Any other council member? Yeah, I want to um, want to thank you guys for putting that all together. And who knew this was going to happen? Um, I remember our last one had the option to renew, and they didn't want to come back, so we had to get somebody else. Um, we're not an easy fix. There's we've got things everywhere, and it will take a while to get someone to even bid. And like Kurt and Sean said, that it's just going to go up in price. So. Well, Armando and I discussed it, it may not be the perfect solution, but it's the best one for the city at the moment while we figure out um, what would be the best solution. And we just need to have open minds about the funding for Parks and Rec. Um, some people have closed minds about what we need to do, but you guys have to keep open minds to keep fix that income stream. And we're going to have to come up with more and more as prices go up. And, Really thank you, um, the Public Works and the Parks and Rec Department for cooperating so well with that. Um, so I appreciate you guys taking your time doing that and coming up with this amazingly fast, it's unbelievable. So I'm gonna have to agree with um, the council members that this was this the best solution for now. Thank you. Any other council member wanna make any comment? Yeah, go ahead, Vice Mayor. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you again for the second presentation on, on this item. Um, like I said earlier, I don't want it to be misconstrued that I have a closed mind to uh, bringing people on board in-house. Um, I think it can be argued um, several ways, uh, whether or not in-house provides better service. That's just my experience, uh, not only in park maintenance, but many other issues. Uh, I think with a, a good uh, partner contractor, and good management of a contract and get really good quality service as well. But here's the bottom line. 
Uh, when I said our backs are against the wall, tell me of the recommendations, what are the recommendation is, is feasible right now? And the answer is none. And so um, I, I, I will support this, but I think that as we move forward, um, as I've mentioned on other topics that we've talked about on this council, we need to keep every single door open. If we're gonna close doors, then we, we're gonna paint ourselves into a corner. And so um, I'm happy to bring on more, more internal employees. I, I think it's great. I think it's good for the city. Um, but this is a larger issue as was mentioned in the first uh, item. This is an issue of economics. It's an issue of what our community wants, needs, and what their desires are. We don't even know at this point whether or not our community, I mean, we do, but we don't know in a formal process whether our community even wants to continue to have turf landscape corridors. They may say, hey, we want you know um, artificial turf or we want um, some other kind of uh, drought tolerant landscaping. And so uh, it's, it's a much bigger issue than mowing the lawns. And, and, and so what my, my job is, I believe as a policymaker here is really to get the best bang for my community's buck and get the best quality service. And so I'll support, I'm going to support this today because I think this is the only option we really have at this point to get uh, that level of service to where we need to keep it. Um, but I think that as we look at options moving forward, not only funding options and, and where are we gonna get additional funds, uh, if we need additional funds, don't know we, that we really do, we'll, we'll have to look at that uh, depending on what the community wants. Um, but, but I think we should also have a, 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 an option F and that option F is um, a contract with another government agency. We don't know. Uh, and even in this presentation, it was said that we don't know if they'd be willing to do it. We, would, we don't know what kind of service they could provide. Um, and like I said, I think we call the city to the south of us, uh, agencies to the north of us and say, what, what do you guys have? that those questions really need to be answered. And, and I, would be, I, would be, it would, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that in this meeting because this is part of the whole uh, issue that we have. This isn't just about mowing lawns. This is about providing a quality service to our community long-term uh, for a reasonable price, um, understanding that what we have been doing thus far, the funds that we bring in for it are not sufficient. And so I, I, I am not um, blind to see that or to not see that um, we have to do that. And so I would ask um, uh, the city manager uh, to, to add that additional um, data point on as we move forward long term to see if that's an option. And if it isn't and if it, it costs more money to do it that way, heck, let's keep it in, in, inside. Uh, let's keep the let's keep the uh, park maintenance workers working um, and, and mowing our own lawns. I, I, I get that, uh, but if we if we don't if we don't at least explore that, I think we're we're going to be missing the boat. So, I, I, like I said, I'm 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 willing to support uh, staff's recommendation. Um, I appreciate staff taking all the time they did answering a lot of the questions I had over the weekend, and I uh, appreciate Armando and his staff for all they do and. And of course, Mike and Mike Selling and, and his group for going out and checking it out. But um, I think we need to not get into the argument of who's, whose responsibility is it, public works or parks? This is one city. And so you guys are doing that and that's, that's awesome work there. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, can, can I respond? Yeah, go, go ahead, Mr. Hines. I just wanted to assure uh, Vice Mayor Lozano that we will <laughs> remain uh, proactive and we will remain open to all opportunities uh, to get the best services uh, per your directive, sir. And um, because this item, if this item is approved tonight, it does not mean that the analysis stops. And so we will continue uh, to explore more and better ways to provide services to all of our parks and recreation programs. And again, so I just wanted to let the vice mayor know, I heard you and and we're we're with you thank you uh, mr. mr lizano is the same thing or oh, my thinking was asking asking a lot of questions with the other option 
I want to make sure if the staff recommended as the only option is viable at this time. Yes, Armando is experienced person, but I, I, I will go with the, the other council. I do not have a problem because we're looking for the quality and uh, the citizen wants that, uh, you know, they take care of the land, uh, park and landscape. So I, I, I will uh, go along with the other uh, council, but I just want to make sure this is the only option, a viable option at this time. You know, it might be, I don't know, the 18 month, we should do analysis if we might be go five year, it might be come back after a year. So just keep in mind, keep analysis, because this item just came in and it, 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 you know, I, I just basically, my question is imply is not easy to manage. And we see a lot of contractor is, is to my opinion, is, is easy to uh, manage. So I, I, I will go along, I will support that uh, with my other, uh, you know, honorable council member, one is supported, I don't have problem with that. Mr. Mayor, yeah, go I, ahead. Just, I just have a couple, couple, couple follow-ups for uh, you, Armando. So how fast are we talking about rolling this out? How long is it gonna take you to procure the equipment that you mentioned? And how long do you foresee it taking to hire the necessary staff that you've mentioned? So we're, um, if we can get the order in tomorrow, up to 30 days to get the equipment here. Um, HR has uh, set a timeline to have them hired on by uh, January 1, uh, to have those five positions hired on by January 1. Um, was that the only two questions you had? I'm sorry, yeah. Councilman. So when, when, does, when does Crossroads actually quit? They've November 15th. November 15th, so we have a gap of November 15th. We have, a, we have, a, we have about a, what is that, a 60 day? I mean, 45, 45 days. 45 days, so what are we gonna do in that 45 day interim? I know it's winter, which is good. We, so timing is we, good, we're gonna utilize our current staff that we have on, on uh, duty. Uh, we are also gonna be asking to borrow equipment from Public Works that uh, they have to help us uh, bridge that gap between now until the equipment comes in. Okay, and my final question to wrap this up is, when we spoke, Armando, you told me that with your experience and the diligence that you and your other staff and the staff of Mike and his staff that have worked on this, that you, you're giving me as a council member, your assurances that you think this is the best viable option and that you feel like you're gonna deliver the best quality that you can for, for this option if we give you the go ahead on that. Yes, it's not the optimal option. Um, it'd be very easy for me to come and say, hey, I need more money to hire a contractor. This is the best option we have to try to stay as close as we can to the budget that was passed. Well, I understand. Um, and and I, I also have Armando Morales on, on the line. If you guys have questions for him too. I believe between the two of us and the great staff that we have on, on right now, I'm comfortable in saying that we can get this done for what we're proposing. Um, even if it's both of us are getting out there and having to get this done, we're, we're gonna get it done. We, we're, we're comfortable, we looked into the timing, looked at the schedule. Um, so we're, we're ready to go. Um, it's gonna put a lot of strain on our guys, but we're up to the challenge. We have a great crew and Armando, I don't know if you want to add anything to that or anything. Uh, yes. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. I just want to reassure you guys, you know, my staff is really working hard. We actually got a head start on trimming. We've, we've done a couple parks already. We've done some streetscapes. We've, we've, we, we're trying our best to try to catch up. Um, I know it's not going to be next year. It's going to take us a while to catch up. Um, there's some shrubs that have been neglected. I mean, they're if you live by Carillion the sound walls, they're going over into people's backyards and it's just, it's gonna take us a while, but I can reassure you that we'll get it to where people are pleased. All right, I thank you for those comments, Armando, both Armandos. I, I, all I wanna know is that basically you guys are gonna give us 100%. And, uh, and I have confidence in your team, uh, Armando uh, Morales, and I've seen you guys working and I just want you guys to take pride in the community like, like, you know, we, like the citizens expect. So with that, if nobody has any comments, I would like to move this motion, this uh, item forward with the motion to approve. I'll second. 
All right, motion by council member Farmer, second by council member Lampson. Tina, may I have a roll call vote, please? Vice Mayor Lozano. Aye. Council member Farmer. Aye. Council member Campion. Aye. Council member Lampson. Aye. Mayor Sandu. Aye. Motion passes with five to zero. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item is communication. Tina, any communication? None at this time. Right, uh, next agenda item J. I would like to adjourn the Galt City Council meeting and reconvene to join meeting of Galt Successor Agency and Galt City Council. Tina, may have a roll call. Board member Lozano. Aye. Board member Farmer. Here. Board member Campion. Here. Board member Lampson. Here. Board member Sandu. Aye. Uh, next agenda item J2, any public comments? I have no written comments. I have no public comments on the attendee side. Thank you. Uh, information consent calendar. I would like to entertain a motion to accept the minute as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion moved by council member Farmer and second by, motion moved by Vice Mayor Lizano and second by council member Lampson. <laughs> Tina may have a roll call vote please. Board member Lozano. Aye. Board member Farmer. Aye. Board member Campion. Kurt. Mr. Campion. I'm sorry. I'm here. <laughs> Board member um, Lamson. Aye. Board member Sandu. Aye. Motion passes by five to zero. Uh, next agenda item is four departmental. Subject, authorize the city finance director to write off loans between the city and successor agency to the redevelopment agency of the city of Gaul, which have been denied by the California Department of Finance as part of the resolution of redevelopment process. Uh, Ms. Tyson. Good evening, Mayor and council members. Um, before you tonight is another cleanup item of the successor agency of the City of Galt's former redevelopment agency. This is the write-off of old uncollectible loans. So as you may recall from the last item brought to you back in September, the redevelopment agency was formed back in the 1980s for the purpose of eliminating blight and redeveloping certain older areas of Galt. Over the years, several waivers were granted to encourage development in targeted areas uh, with the expectation that state funding through the redevelopment agency process would cover the costs. No cash was actually provided for those waiver amounts. In 2011, the state announced that, that redevelopment agencies would be dissolved and the Galt Redevelopment Agency um, combined the anticipated repayments for the waived amounts into what they called the 2011 Consolidated Loan. Um, that was approved by Council Resolution 2011-27, and it's provided as an attachment to this report. It was hoped that that loan would be repaid through the by the state through a new funding mechanism that they were developing. Many cities throughout the state created similar type of uh, consolidated loan arrangements in anticipation of repayment by the state. But with the dissolution of the RDAs, the state provided for the creation of successor agencies. And basically those were developed to wind down or complete the activities that had begun um, through state replacement funding called Redevelopment Property Tax Trust Fund. We call it RPTTF. So Galt successor agency submitted 
the 2011 consolidated loan, along with the Galt Place Senior Affordable Housing Project and other obligations of the old redevelopment agency of Galt to the Department of Finance for consideration from that funding to, to find, finance a stream of funding to pay those off. Although some of the items that the city submitted to Department of Finance were approved as recognized obligations, the 2011 consolidated loan and much of the Galt Place Senior Project was not. The city appealed the denial, but the Department of Finance deemed these loans to be ineligible for replacement funding. Um, the denied loans, principal and interest, are in the amount as of July 2019. They totaled $6,859,719. Um, this amount is being recommended for write-off as there is no reasonable means of repayment available for these loans. The city attorney has reviewed this. The in, your independent auditors have reviewed it and the redevelopment consulting firm that the city um, engages has, have all agreed that this is the proper recommendation. <clears throat> During the appeal process, the city adjusted the appropriated fund balance um, in anticipation of this write-off. So in your budgeted um, fund balance, available fund balances, these amounts have already been removed. Um, the city has reduced those available balances in the current budget and for all the significant loan amounts being presented here, meaning that there's no material fiscal impact to any of the fund balances. The recommendation before you tonight is to approve the write-off of the 2011 consolidated loan and the remaining portion of the Galt Place Senior Project as listed in the resolution. I'm available to answer any questions. Um, this uh, process has been long and there has been a great deal of evaluation done on it. So um, I am available to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Ms. Tyson. Uh, thank you for giving us a detailed report. I know the city get a lot of effort to resolve this. The only question I have you know, we're going to this just off from the book. So our books will be clean because we're not going to get that money back. Is that right? That is correct. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Lozano, have any questions? No, I don't. I think you you, uh, you actually asked the exact question Mike, that I had. So I'm good. Thank you. Council Member Farmer. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, thank you for that, uh, Claire and uh, and Lorenzo for our discussion before the meeting um, yesterday. Actually, a very thorough description of what this was, and uh, unfortunately, you know, looks like we tried to pursue everything we could. Correct me if I'm wrong, Claire, but there is a small piece though. Didn't they approve one of our? Um, what was the one that was approved partially? The the Galt. Um place senior affordable project. It was 975,000 that was approved. It's being paid through that at uh, RPTTF funding source over the course of several years. Um, the current year, I believe, is the last year we will receive payment on that. So that has been removed from the amount presented to you okay. in anticipation of that final payment. Okay, and then also to the, the number, the 6 million, whatever total number, I mean, Technically, just for those that are watching don't understand this, this is basically money we owed ourselves. And so is, is um, a lot of that was interest. There's a great number. So technically the number that we're really out is not 6 million. It's, I mean, there, there's one of them was like a loan from like 1986, right? So that had a ton of interest on it. Correct, correct. Um, and a lot of this is um, at the time the expectation was to encourage development, you waive some fees, but they were tracking those fees and they were adding interest on top of it with anticipation that through those state funding streams that that, that money would be restored. But that was never, you know, that, that never came about. Um, so yeah, 
And that's okay. why the state has disapproved them. And not just for the city of Gulf, but for other cities, because it's a feeling of you've just, you know, moved money from one of your areas to another within the city. Right. And yeah, and that's that's the way it was explained when when uh, city manager um, Heinz was explained to me. So thank you, Claire. And thank you, Lorenzo. For I, I have no further questions. Thank you. Uh, Council member Lentz, any question? Oh, thank you, Claire. You explained it quite thoroughly. It's uh, unfortunate, but got to take care of business. Thank you. Council member Campion. I have uh, no questions on it. Thank you. Any public comment? Uh, no public comments. No, no. Is anybody raise hands? Nobody on the attendee side. Thank you. Anybody, council member, any question? If it's not, then I would like to entertain a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing the finance director to write off six million eight hundred fifty nine thousand seven hundred nineteen in loans between the city of Gulf and successor agency to the redevelopment agency of the city of Gulf, which were denied through the redevelopment resolution process by the Department of Finance. So we have a motion. Please motion moved by council member Campion. Yep. Second by council member Farmer. Tina may have a roll call vote, please. Board member Lozano. Aye. Board member Farmer. Aye. Board member Campion. Aye. Board member Lampson. Aye. Board member Sandu. Aye. Motion moved. Motion moved by five to zero. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next agenda item is, I would like to adjourn the joint meeting of the Gulf Successor Agency and Gulf City Council and reconvene to the Gulf City Council. Next agenda item, L, City Clerk's Report. Uh, nothing this evening. And next agenda item is comments by staff. Uh, Mr. Hines, if you can take care of that item, sir. Yes, sir. Um, City Manager Lorenzo Hines, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the Gulf City Council. Um, I uh, wanted to let you all know that uh, I spoke with Supervisor Don Natoli earlier. And uh, the supervisor will be, uh, is currently developing a proclamation to present to Cafe Latte uh, well, as a congratulations on their 25th year in business. Uh, the supervisor invites uh, all members of the Gulf City Council to co-sign on the proclamation that he's putting together. And so um, if you are inclined, uh, Rose or Tina will be reaching out to you uh, at some point this week and will coordinate signatures. Right, and so that's uh, so. Wanted to give you give you some good news and congratulations to Cafe Latte. The uh, the, the next uh, staff member I wanted to introduce is Armando Solis. Good evening again, uh, Council. Um, I wanted to uh, take this time to thank uh, staff for the event that we had on Friday night, the Spookishly event we had um, uh, Jackie Garcia, our staff at the market did such an incredible job on that event. And uh, I really wanted to give them thanks for that. Um, Cal Waste for their continued support in sponsoring these events, uh, Family Life Church and Horizon Church for their, their help with the event. Our uh, youth commission uh, that helped us with the movie part of that uh, event. Um, you know, I, I I had to convince uh, Councilman Farmer that uh, people were going to show up that day. Um, I'm joking. He had he had to convince me. You know, during these COVID times, you never know what's going to really work. And um, you know, the the complaints that we did see were that oh, I had to wait in line for a long time. Well, you know what? That's pretty good in the fact that uh, we did a great event. Uh, we had over uh, 550 cars go through there. Uh, the wait time was about an hour and 20 minutes uh, from 
from the end of the line to the beginning. Um, and we gave over uh, 800 bags of candy away. So uh, thank you to the businesses that participated. And uh, so and thank you for your guys' support on these things. I would, I would also like to add that, that there were a lot of happy kids um, in those lines as well. Um, and with those 550 cars, uh, Armando also had your city manager on traffic duty that night as well. So never let it be said, uh, the CM doesn't, uh, you know, <laughs> get he, into the job. He, he um, took instruction very well. It was out of breath. I can, I can lead and follow. Yes. Um, <laughs> the other thing uh, there was, so there was a minimum of four people based on what I saw in every car. That's a minimum of four people. So at least 2,000 people went through um, our event last week. And, and again, my congratulations to Armando and his team. Uh, this was my first city event, and I was very impressed and very pleased with the turnout and uh, the way Armando and his staff managed um, just a greater um, than anticipated turnout. So a uh, job well done, Director Solis and, and your team. I'm looking forward to more events. Uh, next staff is uh, Craig Hoffman. Good evening, council members. I don't have anything for you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Uh, how about uh, Claire Tyson? Good evening again. Um, one announcement I wanted to make. Um, we are losing our very capable accounting manager. We have put out a recruitment. Um, please encourage people you may know who are qualified to apply. Um, we will want to fill that right away. And that's all I have. Very good. Economic Development Manager, Amy Mendez. Good evening. I just wanted to really um, give a quick announcement that the County Board of Supervisors has announced the 2020 TOT grant program, which will be providing a million dollars in grants to support nonprofit in the Sacramento region. So if you are aware of nonprofits that would be interested in applying, I would encourage you to let them know. Um, the application period opens on November 6th and closes on December 7th. They do have um, a virtual workshop that's going to be held on November 9th that um, I would encourage folks who are interested in applying to kind of view so they can get some pointers on the application process and things to make sure that um, is included in the application. So that um, again opens on November 6th. It was posted today on the city's Facebook page and we'll continue to post that for the next couple of weeks um, until the grant deadline on um, December 7th. So that's it. Very good. Um, Human Resources Director, uh, Stephanie Van Stein. Uh, yes, good evening, Council. Um, I thought I would highlight this evening some of the job opportunities that we have posted. Um, as Claire mentioned, we have our accounting manager job opening posted right now. Um, we have several other full-time positions opened. We have uh, equipment mechanic public works maintenance worker. Um, we have the continuous recruitment still for police officer, police dispatcher. Um, we also have the part-time opening for recreation worker. And based on council approving the in-house landscaping this evening, we will be posting um, the senior parks maintenance worker, um, two part part time parks maintenance worker ones, and then two part time uh, parks worker two positions. So quite a few job openings right now. And if you know anyone or anyone listening um, on the call this evening, please go to our human resources website for those job opportunities. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, welcome as, as you all see a new face um, um, here in the uh, Zoom cast, I'd like to welcome Interim Police Chief uh, Brian Kalinowski um, to the council meeting and, and welcome Chief and it's good to have you on board. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Hines and uh, thank you, Mayor and council members. Um, the only report I have today is that uh, so far so good on the elections front. 
Uh, PD staff has not had to be involved in any election related issues, either in the community or regionally. And we continue to monitor the activities uh, countywide and with our state and federal partners, but uh, so far so good. And uh, good luck to all those folks out there that uh, are uh, running for election. And that's all I have. All right, thank you, Chief. Uh, Public Works Director, Mike Selling. Yeah, good evening again, Council and Mayor. Uh, you know, with the time change, it uh, just kind of occurs to me, things are darker now. And uh, I think Armando made a comment earlier about how we appreciate the assistance from uh, the community members uh, noticing things and kind of being those extra set of eyes uh, for us to help us address things. So along those lines, you know, if you see a street light out or something, by all means, let us know. It's darker now and, and folks are, are, you know, are out and about uh, uh, during that time. And so if you see something, uh, by all means, use the Galt Connect or give us a phone call or an email and uh, we'll get things taken care of. And that's all I have, thanks. Very good. Uh, City Attorney Kimberly Hood. Uh, I don't have anything uh, significant this evening to report. I know folks are anxious uh, and have the election to think of, but um, I, we are working on some summaries of uh, the new legislation that's coming uh, into play in the new year. So we will be getting that out to the, the council in the next week or so. Thank you. Very good, very good. Uh, Tina Hubert. Any, any, uh, anything for the good of the group? Um, we did post today the committee and commission vacancies that will terminate on uh, December 31st. Uh, current members were notified and we are welcoming new applications. Uh, they're all due to the clerk's office by November 30th. So if you know anyone, encourage them to apply. Very good, very good. All right, that was T city clerk, uh, Tina Hubert. Um, and uh, Rose Rodacker, any uh, anything for the group? I have nothing for the group tonight. Thank you. All right, very good, um, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. I just have one more announcement to make. Uh, the city launched its LinkedIn site uh, this week. Uh, so for those of you who have uh, profiles on LinkedIn, feel free to uh, follow the city of Gulf on LinkedIn. Uh, it's nice to have that presence in that community, and it also provides us another avenue by which to inform the, the public as to the goings on here at the city of Gulf. And Mr. Mayor, that concludes uh, staff comments. Thank you, Mr. Hines. Uh, comments by city council. Vice Mayor Lozano. Yeah, just a real quick uh, comment. Uh, it was nice to uh, be able to attend the, um, the, the event uh, where we um, saw Chief Stockman off uh, out, out of the community and uh, there were quite a few people there um, that represented uh, law enforcement, uh, including uh, the sheriff, the current sheriff, the former sheriff and the district attorney and then police chiefs from all over the area. So uh, it was a great event. I appreciate uh, uh, Acting Chief uh, Kalinowski and all he did uh, to for that uh, event and, and uh, appreciate it. Um, I, I was one of those uh, cars that uh, tried to go to the event on Friday night and uh, um, got caught up in the traffic a little bit and, and turned around and went home, but uh, heard from many people in the community that was quite, uh, quite an amazing event. So thank you. Council member Campion. I have nothing to add tonight. Thank you. Council member Lanson. Yeah, um, I want to, um, so some of you guys know I've been working on the 25 year anniversary of cocktail, coffee latte for a while and we were kind of trying to plan an event but due to COVID we kept putting it off and the year's almost up. So that's why we're gonna go ahead and join with, John, with Don Atoli. Um, I would also like to congratulate one of our local sergeants here, Sergeant Craig Walton has been named the interim chief of Cal Expo. So he'll be running that. And then um, while I was at the, the wonderful event with some of my youth commissioners who are the youth we choose to be the voice to us, um, I know the mayor, some, the mayor usually says at the end of our meetings, be safe and wear your masks. So two of the youth commissioners came up to me and said, Mrs. Lampson, we went into a coffee shop and, and they weren't 
the people making the coffee weren't wearing masks. And we went into someplace else and the, the clerks weren't wearing masks. And I said, oh yeah, they go, well, isn't it a mandate? And I didn't know how to respond um, to our youth with that because it is a mandate. So they don't understand, they wanna get back to school. So I just wanna encourage everybody out there to social distance, do what they can do. Our kids are watching and they see us and they learn from us. So just do the best you can to set a good example and to help our kids get back to school, please. That's all. Thank you. Council member Farmer. Yeah, I wanna say um, thank you again to Jackie and, and her staff and all the partial and all the people involved in the in the trick or treat event it was very good, like everybody's been talking about. So it was it was great to see. And the city manager said it's his first community event and he was so shocked, but you haven't seen us how we roll when we're not in the middle of a pandemic. So wait for those days, wait for some of those events. So, um, and again, Kat, uh, congratulations to Cappy Latte for 25 years to Derek and his family for uh, to be a small business in our small town. It's uh, quite an achievement, um, especially during times that we're going through right now um, that are very hard on small businesses. So congratulations to him. And, um, Last but not least, uh, just wish want to wish all the candidates out there running for uh, offices all over the state congrats, uh, good luck, and, and to the, all the uh, council candidates that are running for uh, seats on our council, to wish them all good luck and and look forward to serving who uh, with whoever um, they are. And uh, with that, uh, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Farmer. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome and congratulations uh, Mr. Brian Kalonowski as the interim uh, city manager. And I also like to uh, thank you for all the staff and all the council members, they are here tonight. We all know today is the election night. Local results may start coming in later tonight. No matter who wins or lose, we must all come together as a Galtonian. As of us, we know running a campaign is not easy. It's a lot of energy. It's need a lot of hard work. I would like to thank you all of the candidates, the candidates who are stepping us for service. And I also lastly, please everyone practice human kindness, be safe, and do not forget, we all are American. Thank you. Thank you tonight. Have any council member, any staff member, before I adjourn the meeting, anybody, any comment or question? If it's not, then I would like to adjourn that meeting. Again, thank you for everything. Good night. Good night.